What's up, gang? Today, I want to talk about some of the misconceptions about turbos. Uh, we have a lot of guys that have warranties and things like that, and they can definitely be avoided. Um, one of the big things I want to talk about today is what's actually in your turbocharger. I don't know how many times I hear guys say, hey, you know, I blew a seal, and they think that there's like a neoprene or some sort of rubber seal in the turbo that keeps the oil in, and that's really not the case. And I'm going to show you what exactly is in that turbo. Stay tuned. So what you can see here is we have some cutaway models that I actually purchased at, you know, three or four o'clock in the morning when I was thinking about how best to explain this. Did some search on eBay, found these. It's gonna be a great video to really inform you guys on what's really in these turbos. So we're gonna focus here on this TDO4, because uh, this is actually a real live turbo, uh, this actual size. TDO4, you'll find like your WRXs, um, that kind of thing, it's manufactured by Mitsubishi. Anyway, so let's take a look here. Um, this would apply to basically any journal bearing turbo. Um, you can see right inside here, you can see both of your journal bearings. Um, and this turbo is actually mounted upside down. This is the drain. But you can see your journal bearings in here. You can see here, this is your thrust bearing. Um, and then, of course, you have your compressor wheel, your turbine wheel and shaft. And the shaft is always connected to the turbine wheel, not the compressor wheel. Um, and then this, of course, is a compressor wheel with a nut. You can also have a boreless, which means that the nut's integrated into the wheel. But we want to focus on the, the center section here, guys. Um, a lot of guys, like I said, they think that there's some sort of rubber or neoprene seal when they say that, oh, yeah, my turbo blew a seal, and that's why it's leaking oil. Well, let me tell you, guys, there's right in here, you'll see that these are rings here. And basically, these rings aren't really meant to keep the oil inside the turbo. They're meant to keep the exhaust gases from mixing into the oil. Um, and like I said, this is upside down, but your drain here, basically your oil comes into your feed, which would, this would be the top of your turbo and comes in and lubricates these journal bearings. And then there's this huge cavity in here and the oil will then drain out through your oil line. Um, there's no reason that oil should be pulling here unless of course, if you have the turbo mounted in a way that will allow oil to pull, pull, and then, you know, it might find its way into the compressor side or into the turbine side. But the, you know, the idea that there's some sort of seal in here that can be leaking, and granted, these piston rings here, I mean, technically, you know, they could relax over time and they could allow an oil leak. But like I said, you shouldn't have any oil pulling up in this cartridge. The oil should come in through the feed, lubricate the bearings, and there's plenty of room for that oil to drain directly right back out the bottom of the turbo, guys. Something else I'd like to touch on is shaft play. A lot of guys think if a turbo has any shaft play at all, it's damaged. And on a journal bearing turbo, that's simply not the case. And the majority of the turbos that we're dealing with, guys, are journal bearing. You can have shaft play from left to right to up and down. The only time it's an issue is you have in and out play. So back and forth would be an issue with the thrust bearing. But you're always going to have some up, down, left, right play. You just want to make sure that the wheel is not touching the housing. And the reason for that being is that the journal bearings ride on a film of oil so when the turbo is not under oil pressure, you're going to have that play. There's got to be some tolerance there to allow the oil to go in and lubricate the shaft. Here we have a billet 78 millimeter by 105 overall wheel out of an S410 SX turbo. And you can see that the fins are quite damaged. This one's even missing. This is something um, often is a foreign impact damage or foreign object damage failure basically meaning something came through the air filter and damaged the compressor wheel and unfortunately this is not going to be something that's covered under warranty because it's not a manufacturer's defect the same thing can happen on the turbine side of the wheel something can come through the turbo um, you know some sort of piece of the motor or a small piece of bearing or something like that or a carbon deposit and this turbine wheel is spinning so fast that if something comes through the exhaust manifold and hits this wheel there's a good possibility that it's going to, you know, damage the wheel, whether it's bending it or taking a piece of the fin off. And then if the turbo becomes unbalanced, then all hell is going to break loose. The compressor wheel can be damaged the whole nine. Basically, anytime you see damage to any of the wheels, whether it's the compressor wheel or the turbine wheel, um, that's going to be a sign of a foreign impact damage or foreign object damage, something coming in and damaging the wheel. Because, guys, these wheels spin in a free space. There's nothing ever that should come in contact with these wheels unless the bearings start to wear and then the wheels rub on the housing. But if your bearings are, are you know, wearing out prematurely, there's some sort of issue there, whether it's an oiling issue, uh, debris in the oil, overheating or overspinning or overspooling the turbo. Um, there's a lot that really plays into that. So guys, we did touch on the fact that a lot of times new turbos get sent back for a warranty because they'll see oil in the compressor housing, the exhaust housing. 
I want to list a couple of reasons that that can happen. One of the first ones is going to be an air leak, whether it's on the air intake side as far as a charge air cooler or um, it's air filters. Basically, if like a clogged filter or a piece of the filter comes off or whatnot, any of those are going to create a vacuum and start sucking oil out of the turbo. Um, another one, restricted oil drain. So basically, if that oil can't evacuate and drain through the bottom of the turbo, it's going to start to pull up and you're going to get an oil leak. If the turbo is not cocked correctly, so basically, if you have the turbo sitting in an orientation where the drain line is far this way or far that way, again, oil is going to pull up and it's going to find a way out, no necessarily out the turbine side or out the compressor side. Uh, one of the ones that guys don't think about a lot, excessive idle. So basically, if you have the truck idling a ton and you're making that manifold pressure, but you're not making any boost pressure, again, there's a pressure imbalance and you could start to have oil get pushed out either side of the turbo. Um, repeated hot shutdown. So a repeated hot shutdown, basically, if you're not letting that turbo cool for a second before you shut the truck down, you're going to get a lot of carbon buildup, and that can also start to get in with those piston rings and create a void there where you'll start to get some oil blow by because of the carbon deposits. Guys, there's really a lot of reasons that you might see oil in the compressor side or the turbine side of the housing, but it doesn't necessarily mean that there's something wrong with the turbo. A lot of times it's a condition outside of the turbo that's causing it to leak oil. So if you do just send it back for warranty, you know, it's probably not going to be approved because there's nothing wrong with the turbo. And the big thing here is a lot of times guys will have this and then they go buy a new turbo and they put the new turbo on and then they're like, hey, my issue went away. It must have been a turbo. When in all reality, they probably just corrected the issue. There was a loose coupler somewhere uh, or the turbo wasn't clocked correctly. And inadvertently, when they replaced the turbo and put the new one on, they fixed that issue and didn't even realize that was their issue in the first place. All right, guys, and a little bit of bonus footage here. I wasn't going to get into VGT turbos and what causes VGT turbos to fail because this could be a whole video on its own. But let me just touch on a couple things here. So this turbo here, you can see the compressor wheel is damaged. Um, you can see there on the ends, it looks like it hit the housing. And when we flip this turbo over, we can see that the turbine wheel is completely missing on this one. So the shaft snapped. Now, fortunately, uh, this is one of our turbos that came back and we got this customer's core back at the same time. You'll notice here, this is where the VGT actuator sits. This VGT is seized up. It's not moving. It's got a little bit of movement, but maybe 10% or 20% of what it should have. More than likely what happened with this turbo is the VGT locked up from excessive heat and that caused the AR on this side to be very small, which allowed the turbo to overspeed and thus snap the shaft. And when the shaft snapped, the wheel went into the sides and damaged the whole, you know, basically the whole turbo shot at this point because you need a compressor wheel, you need a turbine shaft, and the VGT is locked up. So the unison ring is probably damaged as well. These VGT turbos are very expensive, so you can see how this can add up very quick. But let's touch on why I think a lot of these VGT turbos fail. And like I said, this could be a whole video, guys, so we're going to keep it short and sweet. Guys, I didn't want to get lost in VGT turbo talk because this can be a whole video on its own. But just my quick hot take, um, VGT turbos are great when they're functioning correctly. When they're not functioning correctly, they're extremely expensive to replace and to work on. Um, I think a lot of the times we see these vein failures because of, you know, just wear and tear over time. Excessive soot gets binded up in the veins and then the actuator can't move the veins. So then you get a code um, or, you know, I've seen more and more guys that have an EGR delete, they're getting these turbos failing almost immediately. And a lot of that, I think, is because the EGR does a lot to regulate exhaust gap temperature because of the fact that these VGT turbos just weren't, you know, they weren't built in mind to extend, handle excessive heat the way a standard geometry turbo is just a regular cast iron housing. And what happens is, is when there's an absence of the EGR there, you have constant clean air going into the system and you're getting better combustion and there you're getting some higher EGTs. Whereas when the EGR opens and you're putting recycled air back into the engine, you're not getting as good of a combustion and thus it's protecting that VGT turbo. So I think what might happen more is that when you have these higher EGTs, it's making those veins in the turbo get distorted and stuck in the unison ring and it's just ruining the VGT turbo. And you get things like that example where I just showed where you might have a condition where there's an overspeed and it snaps the shaft and it just it's a disaster for the turbo. So like I said, I can dive further into VGT and that kind of thing in another video, but just a quick thing since we're talking about turbo failures. All right, guys, so we touched on a lot of things that would be a warranty or issues with your turbo, oil leaks, things like that, what's actually in the turbo. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. You know, shoot us a message, give us a call, shoot us a text. You know, you see us out on the street, flag us down. Say, hey, yo, I got a question. Guys, thanks for watching. Take care.